Hello everyone, I am Hannah here from Digital Yacht and welcome to this Nav Doctor video. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to use Digital Yacht's Nav Doctor. We're going to be looking at how to certify um, an NMEA 2000 network and we're also finally going to look at how you can interpret this data to make a complete analysis, sorry, um, and diagnosis of your NMEA network. So to start, you need a computer, a tablet, a Mac, or anything that basically that, that can connect to a web browser. Um, you're basically going to need this to connect for your Nav Doctor. Um, after you've connected the Nav Doctor to the NMEA 2000 network, it will create its own Wi-Fi network. Um, this is not a Wi-Fi network that will allow internet access, but it will allow you to have access to a page that will be the web interface for the Nav Doctor. So to connect to it, you basically need to search for all the available Wi-Fi networks. So here is an example on Windows, but this works exactly the same on all other systems. You need to look for a network that starts with NavDoctor. Um, so here it is. Then you're going to click and connect. And then we're going to be asked for a password. So the default password is um, always in capitals. So here it's pass and then the four characters which we can find after the Nav NavDoctor network name. So pass F23C. Um, so we just, re to repeat that, it's pass P-A-S-S -S hyphen the four characters of the product name F23C. So this will of course change as these characters are unique to each product. You're then going to be press next and here you have this tab that appears and you can just click yes or no, it doesn't really matter for the Nav Doctor. Um, you can see here that the Windows is loading and it's basically trying to look for an internet connection, but in reality you're actually already connected to the Nav Doctor. So then you can go to your uh, browser and you can type the address link that will display the web interface of the Nav Doctor. So in this case that will be 192.168.11. You can find this basically written in the manual. You press enter and then you arrive to the home page of the interface. So to start analyzing a network, you will first need to go to the health page. So this is just here. Um, this category is basically designed to identify and diagnose any physical problems. So like voltage, cables, connections on the network. Uh, what does it do exactly? Well, it basically replaces your multimeter. So you no longer need to measure the voltage for each pin um, on the NMEA cable as the product does this for you. So we will start with the network voltage, um, specifically the supply voltage. So this is the voltage that powers all the devices connected to the network. Uh, this is basically crucial to respect. Um, it must be between nine and 16 volts. Um, if you want to see in more detail the voltage levels to respect, for example, you can press on the question mark, uh, which is just here, and then you have all the voltage information. Then we have the bus load. So this is not a, a voltage, it's rather a percentage. And the bus load is like an important indicator. Uh, it calculates how congested the network is. So a load higher than 80% can start to cause problems and some less important devices won't receive data. But we're going to have a look at that a little bit later. Then we have dominant voltage um, and the recessive voltage. So to understand what it's for, I'm going to show you a picture uh, which explains a little bit how it works. So without going into too much detail, uh, computers communicate with zeros and ones. And it's the same basically on your NMEA 2000 network. It's just ones and zeros passing through. So for it to be a one or a zero, it's just the two cables, so net H and net L. Uh, these are the white and blue cables. Um, these will um, have a voltage difference. So when the voltage difference is at zero volts, it's a one. And when it's at 2.15, then it's a zero. So the dominant voltage is the voltage difference between the net H and the net L, which is 2.15. And the recessive voltage is the voltage difference that must be as close to um, zero as possible. If these voltages are not correct, um, it's not a good sign. 
so for the dominant voltage, generally, um, when you have too high of a voltage, it means a terminator is missing. Um, so what you normally put, a terminator basically is what you normally put at the end of your NMEA 2000 network. Um, so there should be two. And here, for example, um, if I was to remove one on the network, we'll see that the voltage um, increases. Um, so it's closer to 2.15. Uh, the range to respect is 2.15 with a tolerance of 0 0.15 volts. But if it's too high or too low, it means you're missing or you have too many terminators. If you have too many terminators, the voltage will be too low. And if you don't have enough, the voltage will be too high. For the recessive voltage, it's um, it will be closer to zero with a tolerance of 0 0.05 volts. Um, an incorrect recessive voltage is a rare case. Um, it can be because of a defect of a device on the NMEA network or a problem between the contact between the net H and the net L cables. Um, if this is the case, you need to basically disconnect every device and uh, to find the one that is causing the problem. So thanks to the algorithm, uh, the NAV doctor can also provide additional indications um, of errors that may be present on the network. So it will help to locate where these errors are. Um, you can find more information in the product manual so you can see the errors and their meanings and the different error um, messages as well. So now we will move to the device part, which is over here. So this category gives us a list of devices on the NMEA 2000 network. Uh, this is particularly useful to see quickly which devices are connected and functioning on the boat. It will also um, allow you to know which devices are recognized on the NMEA 2000 network. Um, this page uh, refreshes automatically. So as soon as a new device is connected and disconnected, um, it's automatic. There's um, no need to um, refresh or do anything. On the table, we can find information such as the... Um, address. Um, so the address um, is a number that is assigned to a device. The lower the number, um, the higher its priority. So for example, here we can see that our nav doctor, um, which is number 250, um, has a very, very low priority. So if the network is very congested, the nav doctor will no longer work and will give priority to other devices. So now we're going to be looking at um, the manufacturer. So then you've got also the um, CAN name. So what is this? Um, it's a unique product number. So it's kind of similar to the serial number. So a DIN um, in this instance. So if you have um, several devices that are identical, like two identical wind sensors or two servers, the instance number will basically increment on the number above um, to make the difference between the two devices. Uh, then we have the type, so class. Um, it's basically the type of the device. So um, basically, what is it? A communication tool, diagnostic tool, chart plotter, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we can also see additional information about the product by pressing um, on the I icon. Um, so here, for example, I press on my AIS, then I can press on my chart plotter. Um, and it will show us the versions. Um, it's going to show us the load equivalency, so uh, which is showing us the energy it takes from the NMEA 2000 network. Um, so since here uh, the MFD of Raymarine is connected externally, it basically takes well, it takes nothing at all. Um, here, um, if we do the same, we can see. Um, that the uh, load equivalency here is two. So that's about 200 um, milli milliers. Um, we will now move to the um, PGN page. Um, so the PGN page, um, this, base, this category basically allows us to um, visualize um, all the um, PGNs. So PGN basically means parameter group number, so circulating on the NMEA 2000 network. Um, a PGN represents 
um, almost like a thread containing information uh, related to a specific area. So such as um, wind, position, um, the course of the boat, um, AIS data. Um, it's here that we can observe all the data exchange between different devices. Um, it's a table that groups all the data that passes and it classifies them according to what they do. So we can see in the table uh, the PGN number. Uh, for example, if we take um, 12974, uh, which is in the description, it does all the um, class um, AIS detection by the AIS. Uh, so we can see that the source um, and that the SRC um, is the one that sent it. Um, if we look at my device, the number one um, is our AIS and the 255 DST um, destination address. So this basically means that it's intended for all our devices uh, because we want everyone to see which boats are available and around. Uh, to get more information on a specific PGM, for example, if we want to see if the data does not display or we need to do an advanced level of debugging, uh, we can press the small i for information. And we are able to access, for example, the MMSI, um, its position, and all the information that the AIS um, basically communicates. So um, we will now move to another category, which is view data. Um, so this category is made especially for advanced users. So if you still have not found your problem on the network, you can record all the communication done by the NMEA by clicking here, and you can send it to the manufacturer of the concerned product. Um, they will be able to read the raw NMEA data of the boat in order to diagnose um, them using analytical tools. Uh, once the recording is finished, you press start log again, and you can save the logs. Then we have one of the most important categories. So this is the report category. Um, this basically allows you to create a report for your client and certify the network once your work is completed. So showing the state of um, your NMEA network. So with all the information we saw before, um, for example, the available devices, the number of devices, um, on the network, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, to do this, um, you basically can put the name of your boat um, here. And then you can also put uh, the name of the person who did the installation. Um, you can also even print and save this as a PDF to then give to your client. So the last category um, we're going to look at is settings, so the parameters. So as in all our products, you have basic settings like changing the Wi-Fi name, changing the password, uh, the IP addresses. Uh, you can also connect the NavDoctor to an existing Wi-Fi network, like for example, the one in your office. Uh, you can access it by typing in the search bar navdoctor.local uh, while still connected to the office network. Um, you also, um, if you have any updates to do, um, we will be able to send you uh, an updated file by mail. So for example, if there's like a new PGM that's come out, um, et cetera, et cetera, uh, we have the serial numbers and the different versions as well. And that's that. Uh, I think we've come to the end of the NAV Doctor presentation. If you have any questions, Please do not hesitate to contact us by email um, at sales at digitalyacht.eu.com. Uh, you can also read the document we have prepared about NavDoctor's um, functions uh, in a bit more detail if you want to get some more information about our NavDoctor. And yeah, thanks very much for listening.